Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get-together live here on Facebook, where we look for headlines from our city, our state, and our, and our country. We pick the good ones, or the ones that we are likely to be concerned about, and we combine them with your comments, ideas, questions, and suggestions on how to best connect with our city, Puerto Vallarta, as a community of English speakers. Today is Wednesday, uh, October 12th, and as always, it is a pleasure to get together with you this morning. And um, as always, we extend our welcome to those of you that are joining us for the first time. Is that if that is that is your <laughs> if that is your case, feel free to let us know with a quick comment saying new and we'll give you a nice little welcome. If you have something truly important that you wish to share with us, please add a capital letter Q and we will look at your comment in the second half of the broadcast. If you are watching later on in, in the day and you're watching on YouTube, well, we love you very much. We don't have commenting on YouTube, but we love the fact that you click the like button. We love the fact that you subscribe to our channel and we hope you continue to find great sources of entertainment in the content that we produce on a regular basis. Let's see, today we have more updates from City Hall, and today we have um, an update on some water that seems to be flowing nonstop around Insurgente Street in Colonia Emiliano Zapata. We have the first of many events that I'm sure are going to come up in our broadcast uh, concerning Day of the Dead, and a surprise city that made a very popular list where could the hottest spot be located the hottest neighborhood according to Time Out New York magazine you're going to be surprised but first let us dive into the news the controversy at City Hall regarding the municipality's expense reports allegedly being modified after they were approved continues casting doubt over Mayor Michel's credibility. Once again, several council members did not modify their stance during their regular meeting with Mayor Michel. Um, they did not modify their stance against him, forcing the meeting to be postponed yet again, this being the third postponement. The issue was detonated, as you remember, a couple of weeks ago when councilperson Carla Quintero presented Mayor Michel with a yellow envelope that allegedly contained a bribe for her to authorize the tampered expense report. And of course, when Mayor Michel is questioned about the envelope, he's quick to reply, it's all politics. But if Mayor Michel has nothing to hide, one has to wonder why it is that his security detail prevents him from answering uh, questions or making statements to the press as mentioned in this article. Finally, 
As we mentioned last week, a complaint will be presented before the state Congress to submit Puerto Vallarta Mayor Luis Michel and City Hall's Secretary Felipe de Jesus Rocha to political trial for presenting the state deputies with a different expense report uh, or expense proposal than the one that was approved by the local council. This complaint cites specific examples. For example, let's say that the cost of a driver's license is set to 2,000 pesos. Well, then the expense report is modified to 3,000 pesos after it was approved. Uh, so why would the government choose to modify and increase expenses or, or costs of things after the expense report is approved? Well, that's the good question. And of course, for better or worse, this issue continues to make national headlines and is ongoing. We will continue to report on this as we see new um, information become available. Now, folks living in Emiliano Zapata may have noticed running water along Insurgente Street in recent days. Well, according to Seapal, the good news is it is not caca water. As such, uh, it is not for them to fix. That would be the bad news. So it is not caca water, good news. Seapal says, not caca water, none of our business, and that is not so good. As such, according to um, Rigoberto Velázquez Navarro, the, the operative director for our waterworks company, um, he stated that the water is coming out of a sewer lid that channels rainwater coming down from the surrounding hills, and that it is quite possible that the particular sewer line may have been blocked during the reconstruction of the Insurgente Street Bridge. But again, Seapal threw the ball at our city's public works department for them to figure out it sounds like a cooperative government. Of course it does. Now let's look at the weather. Today, <clears throat> today is a perfect day to pick up that bad habit you dropped a while back. Oh yeah, so that means I can have a Butterfinger. 26 degrees right now, humidity back at 80%. What's going on, humidity? You're supposed to go away. Um, our temperature in Fahrenheit degrees is 78, and our weather forecast for today says humid and partly cloudy with a high of 33 and a low of 20. Tomorrow, Thursday, humid and partly cloudy uh, with a high of 31 and a low of 23. And on Friday, possible light rain in the evening, the th high temperature is 31 and the low temperature is 24. Moving right along with more announcements, as I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> we're going to start hearing more and more about events related to Day of the Dead as the date increases, I mean, as the date approaches, rather. And um, Nancy Real kindly reached out to me yesterday with information about an upcoming Day of the Dead event to take place on November 2nd at the Isla Rio Cuale. This event will feature face painting, food and drinks, musical entertainment, and spooky tours of the island in English. All information is contained in the link available in the show notes, of course, as always. And this one, this one is unexpected. Apparently, Time Out New York magazine went ahead and quizzed 20,000 city dwellers and asked local experts to rank the world's coolest districts. And guess which one came up in first place? None other than Colonia Americana in Guadalajara. So the article goes on to praise the centric neighborhood's appealing blend of creative squats, art deco mansions, sleek cafe culture, and banging nightlife. And I quote, I can personally attest to some of this. And of course, I encourage anyone visiting Guadalajara, Luisa Patterson, I'm thinking about you, to spend some time walking around this awesome neighborhood. And just so you know where to go, I'll gladly show it to you in the map. As you can see, this is pretty much the bulk of Guadalajara City. Uh, just as an FYI, here is the, the, the El Centro area. Well, the whole thing is El Centro area. This is the most historic area. This is the part of the city where I've been, that I've been mentioning all over. And right next to it is Colonia Americana. It's all 
It looks like a ton of blocks, but it's all fairly walkable if you enjoy walking. And of course, it's all flat terrain. So anybody going to Guadalajara in the near future, you owe it to yourself um, to spend some time in this beautiful, beautiful neighborhood. And as long as we're talking about places to do fun things, let me send you a couple, or let me share with you a couple of reminders. Today is this rag uh, weaving workshop. If you have nothing else to do after coffee and headlines, you can join this workshop today between 1 and 4 p.m. at the Annex Studio and Gallery. This is located in Colonia Cinco de Diciembre. And of course, we're all excited about the upcoming next event uh, by Echo Amano PV. Uh, the next one is going to be on Saturday from 1 to 9 at uh, Puente Cuale Resta Restaurante and Bar. And this, of course, is an awesome gathering of, um, of people, locals, that make handcrafted things so you can actually purchase them and support local artists in the process. Tomorrow, we will feature an interview that I conducted with Joshua, the one and, and only King Midas and our city's expert in tie-dye t-shirts so that you can find out a little bit about where his creativity comes from and how he goes about producing the wonderful shirts that he produces. That will happen tomorrow. And now let's take a quick look at um, some of your questions and seeing what you guys are up to today. I see a lot of good mornings and these are always great. Let me do this. Boom. Uh, let's see. Da -dee -da -dee. So happy I can be here live with you all today from San Blas. I arrive tomorrow. Pat, tell us more about San Blas. I am so curious about going to San Blas and spending the day to find out what's going on up there. Um, is this something that we should do? Is the cluster interested in finding out what's going on in San Blas? If you are, please write San Blas in your comment and that way we will add San Blas to our list of potential places that we can go and explore on a day trip. Uh, Bill, I'm sorry to disappoint. It is not a walk around Wednesday, uh, but it'll be walk around soon. That much I can tell you for sure. Um, Paula says, good morning. Someone asked if there was a reminder anymore. Now there is just interested in the event. I did notice that a few days ago when Facebook was modifying things, they actually changed the way the live broadcasts appear and turn them into events, which is news to me. That didn't used to be the case. But again, this is beyond our control. Let's see what else we have. Hello, Jesse. Love when I get to catch you. Love the shirt. Great color on you. Jesse, Jesse, you never have something unkind to say. So thank you so much for being a part of our cluster. Much appreciated. Clay, what's going on with your city? And I ask about this because, and I, why did I forget to include this in today's news? I don't remember why, but uh, I read that the Sayulita Committee of uh, the Pueblo Magico Committee has all quit. And this is right before the major summit of Pueblos Magicos is coming up. And apparently uh, the government of Nayarit is not taking the committee into account in their decision making. So there seems to be some turmoil over there. I don't know if you know anything about this. If you do, it would be great to hear some comments from you. Uh, let's see what else we have. Da -da -do. There's a queue. Are we the only cat staff that has a cat who steals Doritos to eat and drink? Kathy's Earl Grey tea. Well, I don't know what to say, Dan. Luna doesn't steal Doritos. He doesn't drink Earl Grey. But the other day, oh my goodness, the other day I was eating a, a, a happy chocolate cookie that somebody gifted me or I bought it. I don't remember. This was a, a very potent cannabis cannabis uh, cookie that started crumbling. It was made of, of chocolate 
and some of the crumbles fell on the floor and no I didn't pick them up to eat them from the floor um, because I was thinking to myself well that was a waste but when I saw Luna dashing towards the chocolate crumbles I figured no she shouldn't be eating those things so there you have it uh, let's see what else we have there's a queue are Uber drivers still supposed to wear masks? I've only had one driver in about the last three months that wore a mask. But then yesterday when I called on Uber, I was asked to take a picture of me wearing my mask first because a driver complained. What the fuck? Linda, the question, the answer to your question is Uber drivers are still supposed to wear masks. Um, I don't know why your driver complained. Um, but that's the answer to your question. If you are not okay with an Uber driver not wearing a face mask, you know you always have the choice to cancel the trip and, uh, and let Uber know why you canceled it. Just keep that in mind. Uh, oh, Ramona's getting excited. Five more days. Fantastic. Uh, let's see what else. Michael, I saw this comment fly by right as we were talking about Mayor Michel. I think someone will be stepping down soon. Well, Michael, on, in, in all honesty, one of two things is going to happen either because the, the denounce, the denuncia is also being made, as I understand it, with the Morena party itself. So this would mean that the party, the political party, would have to dismiss someone from their own party, and that just does not look good. So whether it's going to happen or not, um, it's it's a mystery. Uh, Catherine writes, Linda, I have been in at least four Ubers in the last couple of weeks, and no drivers were wearing masks. I can I can chime in with that. I have also been on a couple of Uber drivers um, without wearing face masks, and I have chosen to be okay with that situation. Again, that's not for everyone to choose. We all make choose it, cho choices. We all make choices. We all make choices that are personal and that benefit ourselves. Uh, da -da 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 Oh, Sherry's excited about Guadalajara. Sherry, make sure that you let me know when you're getting ready to go to Guadalajara. I'm happy to share tips and pointers. As you know, I love it over there. And we have a new person. Hello, Linda. It's great to see you. I hope everybody else is saying hello to you. Um, and if not, I'm going to say hello. Welcome to Coffee and Headlights. If there's anything on your mind, this is the time to share it. In the meantime... Feel free to just enjoy your favorite beverage and watch as we answer questions and uh, do the usual thing. Let's see. I see several San Blases. So San Blas is probably going to be something that we're going to be looking at in the near future. Um, uh, uh, da -da -da -da. Doo -dee -doo -dee -doo. Michael chimes in on Santa Fe. On Sunday, I stood on top of the new Costco green roof area in a Mexican park in Santa Fe, just outside of Mexico City. If anyone is going to Mexico City, Santa Fe is an area that you must visit. They have a mall that would take you hours to go through, and eating in the park was relaxing. I've heard about that mall, and I hear it is ginormous. Um... Uh, Pat recommends Paraíso Miramar in the municipality of San Blas at the southern end of Bahia Matanchen. A beautiful place to hang out. Thank you very much. I'll take note of that. I love the tips. Uh, more San Blas. I love it. I love it. I love it. And more San Blas. Okay. Okay. I took, a, I paid attention. I took notice. I will add San Blas to our list of outings. Don't know when we'll get to San Blas, but we will definitely get there on a day off. Do -de -do -de -do. Hopefully I get to meet you in January when I visit. Keep us posted, Jesse. We will make sure to find a way to create some kind of gathering opportunity if we can. If not, we'll make it happen no matter what. Uh, let's see. And what's with my hands going like this all of a sudden? I may be becoming a politician and we don't want that. We don't want that. Um, and I think, I think we are pretty much caught up with our comments. Um, 
it is Wednesday. Let's see today. I have to edit the interview for tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to have an interview and then the weekend is right around the corner. Oh, Saturday is going to be a fun day because Saturday is, we found out, the patron day, the patron saint fiesta for Paso Ancho. I don't remember the saint that that protects uh, Paso Ancho. You know, every town or every colonia has a saint that oversees um a different neighborhood we were joking the other day that it must be san ancho but there is not such a thing anyhow saturday there's going to be a, a, a patron saint fiesta in downtown paso ancho and i'm going to be there with some friends and of course saturday is the echo a mano uh expo the art exposition so it'll be a fun day to spend out and about i'm looking forward to that i'll bring the camera everywhere i go so this is what we have for today in between now and the next time we get together i hope you have a fun time out there wherever you are if you are in town make the best of it if you are getting close to coming to town keep counting those days and if there's any questions we can answer for you as you make puerto vallarta your home it is a pleasure to connect dots here have a great day and hopefully i will see you again soon